Are you taking the ACT soon and wondering how am I going to survive really hard science questions? So in this video, we're going to cover a couple of really hard science questions. You might wonder, how do you know they're really hard, Brooke? Well, we're taking data from our online course and I pulled a couple of questions that students have clicked on more often than most other questions in those tests. So that's where I fielded these questions. The first one is the last question in the ACT 2017-2018 practice test that ACT distributed for free. You can download that on our website, supertutortv.com resources. The other question is from the most recent free practice ACT that you can download from act.org. That is the 2018-2019 exam. And you can find that at supertutortv.com slash resources as well. If you like what you see, you can get lots more of these explanations on our course. I try to address not only how to approach each question so that you know where the answer is, but also like how do you frame your approach, right? Like how do you rewire yourself so that you see it the first time and not just have this aha when you look back at it. I think from looking at the data on our course and seeing like what videos people have watched, I've realized that a lot of times in the science section, students don't improve because all you guys do is you look at what the answer is and then you see where it is in the passage and then you shrug your shoulders and you go, oh, that's why it's right. And then you just move on. But to really improve on science, I think what's important is that you actually are looking at how did I approach this question and why didn't I see the answer before? Where would I have to look in order to find the answer, right? What is the pattern that this particular answer falls into and how do I learn from that pattern? So it's not just about seeing, oh, here's the evidence and it makes sense. It's about understanding when a question asks something on the ACT science questions, what pattern do I need to understand, recognize, or know so that I can take a series of steps to get to that right answer from a forwards motion as opposed to just a 2020 hindsight motion. So in these questions, hopefully I'll go over some of that. We also have a full on prep course for the SAT called the best SAT prep course ever. It's cool too. I recommend you check it out. And finally, I have two books on the ACT math section. This is a draft of the second one. You can get a non-draft online now at amazon.com. Just type in Super Tutor TV one word and these books should pop up. And we're doing some giveaways in the near future. To know about those giveaways, we're gonna do at least one on each of our social channels that are not YouTube. So if you follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook, you can find out when we are going to be giving those away and enter those contests. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And one more note, if you want free tips, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. That's our mailing list. We will keep you in the loop of everything we do. Okay, let's do these problems. Last question, number 40. This is gonna be fun. So we have based on figure one on August 3rd, what percent of incoming solar radiation was not reflected from plot two? So first let's figure out figure one, August 3rd, we want reflection percent, right? So to find this percent of reflection, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to figure out our ratio number and we're gonna have to figure out what that means. But first we have to find the ratio number. So we're gonna go to figure one, August 3rd. Let's start there, okay? Okay, so here we are, figure one, August 3rd. So here's what's going on August 3rd. These three data points are happening. So we have, this is about 0.235 right? 0.237 maybe. This here is about 0.197 or 8 maybe, right? And this here is maybe 0.19. So now albedo is what? We have to figure out what albedo means. Ah, that's confusing. What does albedo mean? Albedo was calculated. Albedo is the proportion of total incoming solar radiation that is reflected from a surface. So the amount reflected is the albedo. So if the albedo is like 0.2, then 20% is reflected, maybe? Proportion of the total incoming solar rate, then 20% because 0.2, proportion is always usually on a scale of zero to one, right? So we can turn that probably into like 20%. Okay, cool. So now, we have to ask ourselves, what's the question? We want the amount that was not reflected. 
So point two is going to be reflected. And what that means is the part that's not reflected is 0.8 or 80%. You see what this is? All we had to do, we had to figure out what albedo is. We were looking up here and we looked at these three values which are straddling 0.198 and then we want to look at what plot. What percent of incoming solar radiation was not reflected from plot two? So plot two was that like 19.8%, right? So that would be about 80% would be not reflected because 19.8% would be reflected because the proportion that was reflected, yes, up here, if we look at this again, what does it say? It says the proportion of the total incoming solar radiation that is reflected. So the proportion that is reflected, again, proportions are usually between zero and one. And what they mean is that this proportion out of the whole, right, 0.2 over one is part over whole. Yes? So if we want to turn this into a percent, we just move the decimal point over two places and we get 20%. And we don't want 20% though. We want, if something's not reflect it. If something is reflected, the opposite of that is not reflected. So we didn't subtract that from 100%. And that's how we get 80. Are we cool? Cool. So this word not is the opposite of what albedo actually represents. So we've just subtracted from one. And that's it. Okay, so this mutagens passage, I think is kind of mind numbing. I don't know if you missed a lot on this. You folks who are with me at 27. But here's the deal, you kind of have to unpack it as you go. It's a little bit confusing and until you get it, some of these can be really hard. So this is one of those where you kind of have to read when you need and get it and that's just life. 27, based on the results of the study, which of the suspected mutagens resulted in the greatest number of his plus reverence? What? Okay, so when I look at this and I look over here, I have no clue from dish and substance and dish and number of colonies what hot his plus rev rest I, I don't know what any of this is so you know what that means that means i have to read and that's totally how this passage is so here's what i'm going to look for as i read i'm going to write down my keywords i have suspected mutagens right so i'm breaking this down one piece at a time suspected mutagens so substance so i'm going to relabel this so when i look at these these must be the suspected mutagens because those are the answer possibilities. So this, I'm going to just label this suspected mutagens. See how I'm piecing this apart so that I get it? So those are my suspected mutagens. Resulted in the greatest number of his plus revenants. Okay, I'm guessing the his plus revenants have something to do with the number of colonies. But I've got to figure that out. So now I need those. That's my other keyword. And I've got a number of those. So let's go over here. Okay, let's figure this out. We've got bacteria carrying a genetic mutation that prevents them from synthesizing the amino acid histidine, or called his negatives. These strains of bacteria must absorb histidine from their environment in order to sustain their growth, exposing his negative strains of bacteria to mutagens. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a his negative strain, and I'm just going to try to break this down with little pictures for myself. We then expose that to a mutagen can cause new mutations that restore the ability of some bacteria to synthesize histidine. Any bacterium that regains the ability to synthesize histidine becomes his-positive and is known as a his-positive revertent. Ah, so basically what happens is if I add a mutagen and that mutagen allows them to then synthesize histidine again, then maybe it becomes his-plus, but it has to be a special kind of mutagen that actually enables them to do more. The number of histin reverences in a population that can indicate the potential of a substance to be mutagenic in humans. Scientists tested four substances, each suspected to be a mutagen on a his negative strain, salmonella, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we have this Petri dish. We put a nutrient agar lacking histidine. So we have no histidine present. Then we stick our thing, right, our his negative in, and then we spread on there one of the four suspected mutagens. And then we see how many colonies we get. The five dishes were incubated. At the end of the incubation, the number of colonies growing on the nutrient agar was determined. So this is it. These strains must absorb histidine from their environment in order to sustain their growth. So here's the key. If the bacteria grows 
on an agar that has no histidine, that means it must be a revertent or whatever, a revertent. It must have reverted back to producing histidines, okay? So the more colonies I have, so lots of colonies are going to inter, uh, imply that I have revertents, okay? So now I want the greatest number of revertents. That's going to be my 107. So that's going to be dish four. And dish four, I have to look it up over here, is substance N, and I'm done, okay? So that was exactly what you thought it would be, but now I completely understand this. And that's super important as I go. I hope you guys liked those explanations and found them helpful. If you did, feel free to go check out more of them at supertutortv.com, again, in the best ACT prep course ever. We also have a free trial on our prep course, and I have a full test worth of explanations as part of our free trial. It's five days, so you can hopefully check that out too as a resource. We hope to help you on your prep journey, and I hope you get the awesome score you want. Good luck, you guys, and I will see you soon at Super Tutor TV. Bye-bye.